name's Fiona, I'm one of the vets of the Chestnut Vet Group and this is Daisy, she's in today for her annual health check and the annual health check is a great opportunity for us to examine an animal in detail and pick up on some subtle changes that can allow us to either investigate or treat things before an animal has maybe shown signs at home and it's a great opportunity for us to do that. So when we're doing a clinical examination, we tend to start at the front of the animal and work our way back and pick up as many things as we can. Daisy's nose is nice and bright, she's not got any discharge there which is great. I'm now going to look inside her mouth. We can see here that she's got some nice clean teeth at the front. As we look further back here, there's a little bit of tartar on her teeth here. There's no gingivitis, so there's no reddening of the gums, but a little bit of tartar there, so we would want to talk a bit about oral hygiene and how we can try and prevent that developing in any way. And we're also going to have a little look inside her mouth. That's nice and clean, no lumps or bumps or any problems there. And we'll have a look at her gums as well. We can pick up the colour. We press the gum and see how quickly the gums return back to redness. We're blanching them and that's a, a good indicator here as well. Good girl. Okay, so the next part of our examination is going to be looking at Daisy's eyes. We're looking to see if there's any discharge from the eyes, that she's not been blinking at home or had any problems. We look deep down here in the conjunctiva for any redness and also at the white part of the eye, the sclera, to check there are no problems. If anything shows up at this stage, we may well use an ophthalmoscope, which is a special magnified light to have a look in more detail. And we can also use that to look at the back of the eye as well. The next part of the examination is to check Daisy's ears. And being a spaniel, these breeds tend to get lots of problems and we can see that it's nice and pale, there's no discharge, no smell, and she's shown no signs of a problem at home as well. Good girl, good girl. Now at this stage, when your pet's being examined, you may just think the vet is just stroking your pet, but actually they'll be feeling for lymph nodes and glands. These are important parts of the body that can actually swell with infection or also with some cancers. And they're in various parts of the body, around the neck and around the back legs. And your vet's probably feeling for those and making sure they feel normal. And daisies do, which is great. Good girl. Okay, so the next part of our examination is moving a bit further backwards. And we're going to have a listen to Daisy's chest and make sure that sounds okay. Now what we're listening for is first of all her heart and we're making sure that it's beating regularly. We're also making sure that we can't hear any murmurs. Heart murmurs will develop when you get turbulence around the heart valves and so it's important not just to listen to one area of the heart but around the chest so that we can pick up any very focal changes. So I'm listening around all the different heart valves so I can pick up some very subtle changes with murmurs or irregularities. And I'll also listen to the lungs. Certainly not just one area, but different areas around the chest. So I can pick up subtle changes and I'm listening for any increases in sounds, any decrease in sounds or crackles or pops. And by just stopping Daisy panting, I can just hear that in a bit more detail. Lovely, and that all sounds great. The last part of checking her chest is just to have a quick feel of her throat and just make sure that the upper respiratory tract isn't causing any irritation. And that all feels normal. Lovely, so now moving on, I'm going to have a feel of Daisy's tummy. Now again, at this time you might think that the vet is just giving your pet a little bit of attention, which is lovely, but actually we can get a lot of information just from feeling in the abdomen and having a good feel around. And what we're actually doing is feeling for, for any increase or decrease in size of the organs that we would expect in the body and for any discomfort that your pet may be showing. So just behind their ribs here, we're feeling for the liver. 
um, and I can feel just the edge of that, feels normal, not painful in any way. Feeling in the area of the pancreas, and if that was sore, that would raise some concerns, but Daisy's nice and comfortable there. I'm feeling over the two kidneys on either side, and again, I can feel a normal shape to that. No lumps or bumps, no discomfort. And I'm moving back and feeling over the area of her spleen. And then back over her bladder, which is nice and small. She's been to the toilet this morning, so not much in there. And also through her intestines. Again, I can't feel any lumps. I can't feel any swellings. Nothing that's particularly sore right through to her back passage. So that all feels great, but it's given me a great opportunity to really pick up on subtle changes there and any possible things that might raise concerns. And uh, gladly, nothing is uh, up with Daisy at the moment, which is good. So now just moving back onto her skin. Certainly skin conditions are very, very common in dogs, um, and we rely on the owner at home picking up any itching, um, any dandruff or changes, and we've not seen any problems with Daisy. But what I'm gonna do is just Look underneath the fur here and check that the skin looks normal. Okay, nice and white there, no scurfiness. It's not causing her to itch by having a lick here. And I'm looking to see, I can't see any sign of any small uh, wrigglies in there, such as lice or evidence of fleas, such as flea dirts, which are actually uh, flea feces, little black dots that you might see that when they're wet will turn a little bit red. And Daisy's fur and her skin all looks really lovely, which is great. Okay, so the last part of the examination is to look at her bones and just have a little feel of everything and make sure that she's not sore anywhere. Her own has not reported any lameness or um, difficulties in her walking at home, but we just want to have a little bit of a check here. She's not finding that sore in any way. And a good feel down. We expect dogs, particularly young dogs like Daisy, to have a really good range of movement and be able to stretch their legs almost like yoga positions. And Daisy can. And a nice feel down her spine. And she's not shown any pain anywhere suggesting that she's got a problem. She's nice and flexible. And to finish off, your vet may also take uh, the dog's temperature um, and just make sure that, that everything is normal there as well. Good girl, Daisy. And that's normal too. So that's a full clinical examination. We've given Daisy a head-to-toe examination. We've not found any problems, which is great, but it's given us that chance to reassure us that everything is fine, and had we found a problem, we'd have been able to act really early on.